Professor Orion Brook and PhD student Katie Harris set up 29 trail cameras around Saskatoon. Ryan joins us now to discuss that work. Good morning, Ryan. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm doing very well. Ryan, what about that encounter at Sylvia Fedoric School uh, inspired you to look into this? Well, it's, uh, we've been doing uh, farmland moose research for quite some time. You may recall now we're getting almost 10 years ago, uh, we were collaring moose between Saskatoon and Regina with GPS satellite collars and tracking them. And so we've been really interested in this phenomenon where, you know, moose don't belong in these areas. I remember when I first moved here, we were driving to Regina and I made my wife pull over because I had to take a picture of a moose crossing sign thinking, what fool put this sign up? This is the biggest <laughs> joke. My friends are going to get a kick out of it until we passed five more and realized this is moose habitat. And so, you know, that sort of is a long term question. But the in the city became the second big surprise saying, well, you know, we don't see moose in cities, but of course we have seen them and they've been increasing in Regina and Saskatoon. There was one swimming around, I don't know how many years ago it was in uh, Lake Wiscana for multiple days in the summer. And then this, you know, this moose uh, broke through a glass window and came into a school and, you know, this is pretty serious stuff. And we know that there are lots of wildlife that we love to have in cities. Of course, people are obsessed with birds and people love to see foxes and all kinds of animals um, in and around the city. But we know that things like black bear, which we've also seen, uh, moose, wild pigs, and cougars are sort of the four species that are just simply incompatible with city life. And the only real response is to remove them. And so we wanted to do some research to really help support our understanding, like what exactly is going on here? Where are the hotspots? And so we started putting up these cameras. And um, as always, when we get into this, there's lots of interesting stuff and, and numerous surprises along the way. So you mentioned those cameras, 29 in total. What did you see? Well, we saw an awful lot, actually. And of course, the uh, predictably, the weirdest species of all are the humans that show up in these cameras. <laughs> And so we get all kinds of, uh, uh, yeah, definitely I could say interesting uh, responses there for sure. But um, we we did actually have over 200 photos of moose show up in these in these photos, and we saw not just animals wandering around. We had 249 photos, and it was across 12 cameras of 29. So it wasn't just. We have some, of course, on the very periphery of the city of Saskatoon, and some much more in inner city and we saw them across 12 cameras so certainly more than we expected um and although it was only a three-year study during that time so far we've already seen a significant increase in the number of moose there they're mostly found in july um, this is not surprising to us and kind of expected we've just wrapped up the breeding season for moose and so all the calves have been born in the last few weeks in saskatchewan and what happens is females, right before they give birth, any calves they have from previous years, they'll boot them away and say, you're out on your own, Junior, take off. I'm going to have my calf by myself, and, and that's that. And those young ones, they've been just following mom around blindly, not sure what's going on, but just stay with mom and we'll be fine. And all of a sudden, they're out on their own. And so through June and July, we'll see them wandering into cities and getting into all kinds of trouble. Are we seeing an increase in the cities or is that uh, part of uh, maybe just uh, people being more aware of it? Is this something that, that's trending up, Ryan? Well, it's a great question. It certainly has. I mean, you talk to people from 50, 60 years ago and most were rarity even in the farmland. And, you know, when you think about Regina and Saskatoon, these are urban centers in a sea of agriculture. Um, not, you know, like in Alaska. Yeah, of course, they've been showing, you know, in the the TV shows and movies and things, moose wandering through cities for, for decades. And that's not a surprise. But when you think of where we are in the prairies, it is pretty shocking. And so people that we've talked to extensively have said, yeah, it would have been unusual, very, very unusual to see a moose in a decade in these farmland areas, certainly never mind cities. So there's no doubt there's been an overall increase in the southern half of the province in moose. And, you know, five or six years ago, there were some collared moose in Montana that wandered up north into the, you know, this is open prairie, southern Saskatchewan, right on the U.S. border. So no question it's on the increase. And, you know, we had eight uh, moose in our first year, 23 in the second and 29 in the third. So 
we need more data before we can talk about long-term trends, but that certainly speaks to a, a pretty big increase just in Saskatoon from, and these cameras are objective, right? They're out there 24 seven, 365 days a year, getting anything that walks in front of them. So those are uh, systematic and not prone to the kind of biases we get from public reports. Yeah. What is a climate change or, uh, you know, just people spreading out to uh, bedroom communities and that expansion of, of construction or uh, these moose losing a bit of their habitat have to do with, with this uh, trend we're seeing? Yeah, habitat has been changing for sure. Uh, climate is warming. Uh, although, interestingly, moose actually really do suffer from uh, they actually can overheat in uh, winter even, and certainly in summer. And so what we found is that they use these pothole wetlands. Of course, Saskatchewan is famous for our potholes and literally thousands upon thousands of these tiny wetlands that might be the size of a bathtub, that might be the size of your yard or even the size of a, you know, a neighborhood. They can be various, but they're key habitat because they provide wetlands for them to feed in. They typically have willows and some aspen trees and other cover around them to hide in and they can soak. And so when we go find these moose in the heat of July, they are laying down neck deep in the water of these potholes staying cool. And if, you know, 15, 20, 25 years ago, a lot of those potholes were dry. And so one of the big burning questions for us is, you know, what happens in the face of climate change as things dry up? And of course, drought has been on everybody's mind in the last few years, including this year. And so drought can be probably the biggest problem for moose over the long term and not having a place to cool down in summer. And Ryan, people love uh, taking photos, I think, at a distance, sometimes not so much uh, of moose when they come through the city or whether they're encountering them uh, just outside. Uh, what should people be doing? Because these are wild animals. They're, I think they're much bigger than than you would expect, maybe, that you would think if you hadn't encountered one before. What's uh, some of your advice as someone who's seen the these moose and uh, seen them uh, on these cameras uh, could pop up more frequently than uh, maybe we are, we've expected? Yeah, moose are interesting. They're by far the biggest member of the deer family and far, far bigger than a deer or an elk. Um, and they can be aggressive. They have uh, some tolerance and they often have fear of humans, which is good. Um, and certainly because we have so much hunting, these moose generally tend to avoid people, which is a good thing. But at the same time, uh, a fem- especially females with young, and this time of year is particularly bad because those young are small and maybe hidden off to the side. So you might see a moose, but there might be two or three calves tucked in the you know the willows right next door. And those that's where they can be really aggressive. So trying to get the Instagram shot and the the, the hero pose with the moose uh, right behind you, that could end very, very badly. And they will they will attack people. Certainly people talk about wolves and uh, you know, I've been out in the bush for many decades and, and working in and around all kinds of wildlife. And I worry way more about moose than I ever would about a coyote or a, or a wolf for sure. And so they can be aggressive and you definitely want to get out of their way and not approach them. And you also want to call that in in the city because, as I say, they're just not compatible. The only real option to manage them in cities is for the province to dart them and take them somewhere out in the wild and move them far out of the city. And they've been doing that really successfully for a long time. Ryan, really appreciate your time and uh, good luck with the rest of the research. We appreciate it. Thanks, Adam.